have a need of it? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. How are you? Hi, assembly member. Good. Nice to see you. Good. 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 coalition of elected officials and community leaders who have joined me to call for an end to these ongoing random acts of violence. Just as the knockout attacks perpetrated against innocent New Yorkers and perhaps one group of people were and are unacceptable, the attack against Taj Patterson is equally unacceptable. We join today to call for healing and unity in light of the attack against Taj Patterson and all of these knockout attacks. And we call for the swift arrest of any individual who is responsible for the hate crime against Taj Patterson and is responsible for any knockout violent crimes against anyone in the city of New York. Taj was a 22-year-old young gay college student. He was walking to his home in Fort Greene. And unfortunately, this event has changed his life. And today, too many youth too many members of the LGBT community, too many Jewish members, too many black members, Latino members who have been unfortunate victims of violent crimes in the city of New York. And today we come together to say enough is enough and we must stop the violence. The first speaker is the assembly member who often represents Borough Park, assembly member Dove Hyken. Thank you. First of all, Leticia, thank you for thank putting you. this together. Uh, the beauty of today and this is not an uncommon occurrence, is that we all stand together from Borough Park, Crown Heights, Williamsburg, and other communities. We are all one. We may look different, we may wear different clothing, but at the end of the day, we are New Yorkers who care for the city and we care about violence perpetrated against innocent people. When someone becomes a victim, it's not just the physical part that you know, the damage that is done. It is also the psychological. When you become a victim, you live with that even when you don't see any more marks on the face or the body. So, we're here together. Good friends of mine from the legislature, uh, uh, Ken Thompson, the DA elect. We stand as one. We will not tolerate any kind of hate or violence regardless of where it come from, comes from. It doesn't matter. It is unacceptable, and we will always stand together. And we hope to God that those who are responsible for the violence that has been brought to the city, we live in a wonderful city, in a safe city, and, and I just want to say to everybody out there, don't be afraid. There are people who are afraid to walk because of the knockout, because of something else. People are afraid. Don't be afraid. Keep your eyes open. Watch, but don't be afraid. But we hope and pray that with God's help and the New York City Police Department, that those responsible for the violence created in this city that has created, unfortunately, quite an, an amount of fear, that individuals will be apprehended and we will throw the book at them. We will send a clear message. But we stand together, all communities. Thank you, Leticia. Thank you. There has been these news media reports that there's tension between the black community and the Jewish community. Let me dispel that fact. There is no tension. In fact, it's more of the media who's propelling this myth. And all that we have to do is stand together as one, as one community, saying to, an end to violence, to stop the violence. The next individual is the district attorney-elect of the borough of Kings, Mr. Ken Thompson. Look out there, look. James, I'm here today with a diverse group of elected officials and community leaders to make it clear that when I take office on January 1st, I'm going to make sure that we hold these individuals accountable who attacked the young man viciously to the point where he suffered a torn retina. We cannot have these attacks. It's like we can't have people being punched in the back of the head in Crown Heights or East New York because these, these attacks are actually an attack on the rule of law an attack on all of us. So I stand here today to make sure the people of Brooklyn know my determination to come down because we have to walk the streets free of fear of being attacked. I intend to bring that. I'm standing here determined to make sure everyone knows that we're going to get to the bottom of whoever did this to this young man and whoever's behind these other attacks. Thank you.
As we bury Nelson Mandela today, his message was the oppression of black people is unacceptable and the oppression of white people is unacceptable and the oppression of Jews is unacceptable. And that's why we are here today on the day that we are burying Nelson Mandela. The next speaker is Rabbi David Niederman, the president of UJL Williamsburg. Rabbi. Good morning. It is sad that such a unity conference or summit has to happen on occasions when some innocent people are beaten. You, councilwoman and, uh, and the public advocate elect, you have been outspoken and you have been united with us when anything, when hate crimes occurred in Williamsburg. Should it be the burning of Mazizet? Should it be in shooting? You have been there. And that's clear proof that there is unity and it's a message for everybody. Now you'll be the public advocate and you'll be in, it's not only Williamsburg and Fort Greene, but it's Brooklyn as a whole with the new team, the DA and everybody. The clear message is no violence against anybody for whatever reason. And thank you for bringing us together. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is the assembly member representing the district that I cover, assembly member Walter Mosley. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate elect. <clears throat> As we stood in Crown Heights just a few weeks ago, we talked about the uh, tolerance for violence, the tolerance for acceptance, the tolerance uh, for needless acts that are being perpetrated by all our constituents. And as I said then, uh, violence of any nature, whether it's perpetrated by someone because of their sexual orientation, by their color, or by their religious affiliation, will never, ever, in this Brooklyn that we live in now, will be tolerated. And I'm looking forward, standing behind me, our new district attorney, my neighbor and constituent, Ken Thompson, a public advocate elect, uh, a constituent, a friend and neighbor, who will continue to be just as vigilant as those who try to be as vigilant in terms of perpetrating violence against our New Yorkers. So I stand here wholeheartedly with them, because regardless if it's a hate crime against someone who happens to be gay or lesbian, someone who happens to be Jewish, or someone who happens to be black or Latino, that will never, ever be the basis by which we will accept any type of violence against any Brooklynite, against any New Yorker going forward. So I thank you wholeheartedly uh, for organizing this. And as Rabbi Niedermeyer said, we don't need to have violence be the uh, spearhead for organizing us together. And we're looking forward to continuing this dialogue as we go forward. Thank you. We pray that Taj recovers and that he does not lose his eye. And we pray that all individuals who are victims of the knockout attack um, also uh, are, have a speedy recovery. And now I bring to you a trio of council members who will really represent the face of New York. Council member Steve Levin, council member elect Lori Cumbo, and council member elect Robert Cornegy. Thank you very much, public advocate elect James, and I want to uh, thank you very much for bringing uh, uh, this news conference together um, in a show of unity. This community in Williamsburg, which I'm very proud to represent, uh, to me represents the best of who we are as New Yorkers. Um, it represents uh, our diversity, uh, it represents uh, so many uh, different types of people who come together and they live together in peace and harmony uh, every day. And uh, that's why I'm so saddened uh, that we are brought together here today um, over uh, an issue of, of violence and how that tears at that fabric. Well, I have a message to anybody who perpetrates violence in our community. The fabric of the community is stronger. It is stronger than, uh, than that effort to tear it. And uh, we need to make sure that the message is very clear uh, to anybody out there uh, who would be thinking of perpetrating this type of violence. We have one system of justice in this city. And uh, the justice that is uh, applied in Crown Heights, or in East New York, or in Borough Park, applies in Williamsburg, it applies in Manhattan, it applies in Staten Island, it applies throughout our city. We need to make sure that that message is absolutely 100% clear. I want to thank the District Attorney-elect for being here. I want to thank Public Advocate-elect for organizing this because I think that it's 
absolutely essential that that message gets out here that we are stronger than this. Uh, we will make sure that we uh, do everything we can uh, to make sure that whoever is responsible for perpetrating this act of violence or any act of violence is brought to justice swiftly and thoroughly. Uh, but this will not tear us apart because the fabric of our community is too strong for that. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I want to thank uh, the public advocate elect for bringing this diversity to people together. And what I'd like to say is this reminds me of how important it is for violence to be recognized as a public health issue. So violence is not indicative in one community. We see that all communities are, are being affected by violence. So the government, federal government, our city, state, and federal representatives have to be able to get together and recognize violence as a public health issue. And once that's done, we'll, we'll, we'll cease to have these type of vigils. It's great that we're here together, but we really have to recognize that the violence that was per perpetrated on this young man is violence that we're seeing in every single community in isolated incidents. This allows us an opportunity to look at it globally and understand that violence has to be recognized as a public health issue. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to again thank public advocate-elect Letitia James. This is so powerful what she has been able to organize through her work and effort. And to see this diverse coalition today is really powerful in that everyone here represents so many different people from so many different walks of life in our community. And by unifying and coming together, we have an opportunity to recognize our humanity and to recognize the fact that we are one people. And that if we see each other as one people, we can move forward collectively. The danger in what's happening is that when we describe people by their race, when it comes to attacks in our community, it becomes very dangerous. We can't allow ourselves to be defined by that. We have to make sure that all people feel safe in our community. We have to recognize that what a few dangerous individuals have done do not define an entire race and do not define an entire culture. We have to make sure that we do not allow the way these cases are being described racially and culturally to divide us from all the work that has been done to unite us. And I stand here with our elected officials, with members of the clergy, with people that are community representatives and leaders, because we are coming together as one. And we are saying very strongly that violence that happens to anyone in our community for any reason will not be tolerated. And as an entire community, we will continue to come together and we will continue to make sure that these epidemics do not continue to happen. So I am proud to be here with my elected officials. I'm proud to be here with all of you. And I feel so strong and I feel so empowered by the fact that so many of you with so many different backgrounds and cultures and communities are here today so that we can move forward collectively with one voice protecting all of the citizens in Brooklyn, New York and the city of New York. Thank you. So instead of a trio, that was supposed to be a quad, but Councilmember David Greenfield is late. So. But, we, but I'm sure he joins in the message. The next speaker, I also represent the Crown Heights community, Rabbi L.A. Cohen, where there have been a number of knockout attacks. Uh, coming here from the Crown Heights community and as uh, our uh, public advocate-elect, who's our former council, uh, still our council member. Two weeks. Us, two weeks, right? Has <laughs> uh, organized this and it's really, uh, she, she and uh, all, the elected officials here, some of them are Mosley, some of them are Heiken, our council members elect, uh, Laurie Combo and Robert Carnegie, and of course Steve, Steve Levin representing this district, and David Greenfield, who's on his way, have all been consistent, and this consistency is very important. Two things that an unprovoked act of violence on another human being is not acceptable. And number two, that Anyone who is singled out for any specific aspect of his being, that is, not, that is even more not acceptable. Because the use of some kind of stereotype or some kind of image of somebody who is dehumanized to be looked at as this, that or the other, that is taking away someone's humanity and we have to make sure that this should not happen. And our laws are very clear that when there is an aspect of bias that's involved in an attack, that that goes beyond just a regular uh, act of violence which itself is so uh, to be condemned. And one more thing I want to add is that the greatest human right is the right to walk down the street 
safely and to get home. So this, this is a message that we're all joining, we all believe in it. As I said, our elected officials have been very consistent in this and we're looking forward to the work of our new DA elect for, the, for Kings County, Ken Thompson, and he has already made it very clear that he is on the same page, that this is going to be his philosophy, this is going to be his approach, and we wish him a lot of success, because ultimately he's going to be the one that's going to have to do the hard work of bringing justice in this case. Thank you. Hate crimes are not a reflection of Williamsburg, Fort Greene, or Crown Heights. And intolerance is not what Brooklyn is about, as our district attorney has indicated. The next speaker is speakers are Rabbi Abe Friedman, Rabbi Moshe Indig, and Gary Schlesinger, the board chairman of UJA Cares. Good morning. As a Williamsburg resident and a community leader, I am here with a united voice to echo what the uh, public advocate elect and of course the uh, district attorney elect and all the other elected officials says this community is shown and proven over and over to be united. We are against violence uh, in any case, shape or form. We are, we are extremely condemning the violence, what happened, doesn't matter which faith you are, Jewish, black, African American or any other uh, culture. We don't accept such violence. This community is known for years to be the most charitable community, the most united community. We have built the last 10, 15 years a strong working relation with all communities, especially with the African American community and the leaders. And we don't want to go back to those days where you're afraid to walk the streets. So we ask all those who have hate to discontinue and immediately the cease of it because you will be bring to justice. Thank you. We're facing a lot of changes now coming to our city, our borough over here in Brooklyn, and we're all looking forward to our great change for the better. But one thing we don't want, our community, the history of our community was never, we never tolerated violence, and we're not going to change this. We're going to keep on with this. Change is only good for the better. This is the same. It was always, our community was always against any violence, and we'll keep on doing the same. We're not changing our way of behavior, and we, we strongly condemn whatever, any violence, not only in this community, all over the city or the state. And we thank you very much for all our elected officials for coming out and show the support for anybody and everybody to make sure that we are safe and we'll keep on to be safe and safer in the future. Thank you very much. This community was born out of the ashes of the Holocaust. My parents are all were Holocaust survivors and so are a lot of uh, people standing here. Uh, violence does not belong in this community, never belonged in this community, and we condemn and condone any acts of violence. I want to recognize uh, my council member, longtime council member, Fitz James, for putting together such a rainbow coalition of so many elected officials and community leaders from all stripes and all colors and all religions and all races. Um, especially we have here DA elect Ken Thompson, who uh, speaking with him for so many hours, I know that he is going to be the right person to unify this entire borough of Brooklyn. Again, we all ask everyone that uh, knows anything about what happened, please come forward and let's work together to unify all communities in Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker is someone who has consistently indicated that we will not stand for violence against anyone perpetrated because of race, perceived religion, or sexuality. Mr. David Pollock, an executive director, assistant associate executive director of the Jewish Community Relations Council. Thank you, uh, public advocate elect. Uh, I have the advantage of age, and I've been around for a while, and I, we stand together without a doubt. Uh, to say that can, violence cannot be tolerated and will not be tolerated. And the advantage of the age is that I go back to the writing of the hate crimes laws of New York State. And I just wanted to review them in our uh, district attorney elect just standing here. But hate crimes are defined as acts motivated by race, color, national origin, ancestry, gender, religion, religious practice, 
age, disability, or sexual orientation. These are always uh, treated as special because they, these kind of crimes tear against the uh, fabric of our society and we won't tolerate them. We rely on our public officials to enforce these laws and we uh, stand together to say they should be enforced. Thank you. We have rep a representative from the Department of Justice. I want everyone to know that the Department of Justice is looking into the crimes, the knockout crimes, as well as the crime against Taj Patterson. We also have Representative Rabbi Ab Abe Lichtenstein and Rabbi Yan Yankee um, Iskowitz. Again, any, we would love for the community to cooperate. The community in Williamsburg, Crown Heights, the community in Fort Greene, anyone who has any information leading to the arrest of individuals who are responsible for the knockout crimes in Brooklyn, as well as anyone who was responsible for the crime against Taj Patterson, please come forward. I want to thank the MTA workers who unfortunately broke up the fight, broke up the incident involving Taj Patterson. Um, Lord knows what would have happened had this attack gone further. There's a possibility that he may lose his eye. Again, we hope that he does not. And we also pray for the recovery of all of those who have been victimized as a result of the knockout crimes. Our message is simple. Stop the violence. Is there any questions? Oh, last uh, spoke speaker uh, is Aaron Drinkwater, who represents the Pride Center. And Councilmember Greenfield as well. Uh, Aaron Drinkwater represents the Pride Center, which is an LGBT center, uh, which is which will be housed in Brooklyn. And so, Aaron, would you please come forward? And of course, my colleague, who has perfect timing always, Councilmember David Greenfield. <laughs> I just want to say from the Brooklyn Community Pride Center um, that we are very upset to hear about this news um, and this attack. Uh, the Brooklyn Community Pride Center is open seven days a week uh, serving Brooklyn's LGBTQ community. And one of our programs is called Queer in Faith, and this is a program for faith leaders to come together and talk about LGBT issues. Um, I hope that the individuals who attacked um, Taj are brought to justice, and the Brooklyn Community Pride Center is here to provide support and resources along with our other colleagues um, and community-based organizations. So I want to thank the elected officials and the community leaders here for uh, paying attention to this issue and really moving it forward to make sure that justice is served. Thank you so much. Councilman Griffin. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh Public Advocate Elect Fish James for organizing this. Thank you for always standing with us on any issue of hate in this city. And I think uh, the message that we sent today is very clear. If you look at the cross section of folks who are here from literally every segment of all the communities of Brooklyn, the message is that we're not going to tolerate this hate and divisiveness, that we're going to have zero tolerance for this. And I have every confidence that the NYPD, the District Attorney elect Ken Thompson, are going to work together to find those perpetrators and to hold them accountable because today's New York is not the New York of 20 years ago. It's a New York where we do get along and we do work together and we do have mutual respect for each other. And I think that's the message that we want to send. And quite frankly, the actions that we've seen across the board are the actions of a few. We are the folks who represent the community, we're the folks who work with the community, and we're the folks who can assure all the communities in New York City that we do work together, that we do respect each other, that we do, do, we have, we do have mutual understanding, and we're going to keep working towards that goal of One New York. Thank you very much. So again, we stand together saying enough, stop the violence. Any questions from the media? Thank you all for coming. Oh, I, 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 I know. I know.